Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Today is Monday, the 24th of March, 2008, and the market's closed. We had another uh, big rally here today. The S&P 500 finished with a gain of $2.87, or 2.1%. You can see that it came right up to this declining 50-day moving average, and we're seeing the volume really start to diminish in here, which is uh, not a reason to sell or sell short, but a reason for concern in here. And I pointed that out midday. Uh, on the blog, if you uh, had taken a look at that, that even at that time the the market was uh, volume was running low. But uh, again, only price pays. The uh, declining volume and the declining 50-day moving average just give us reason to cast an eye of suspicion over this rally. These types of rallies don't typically continue to follow through immediately. What we see instead is that we see backing and filling. We see this market rally up, and then it should likely pull back to find some support levels here um, as, as, it, uh, as people start to take profits and that sort of thing. So what we can also look at in here is kind of this little trend line that seems to be holding as resistance a little bit. Now, that could project us to continue to rise up above that level, so those don't really do us a lot of good for finding resistance. Just kind of more of an interesting thing to look at. When we look at the intraday to action here, first we'll start with the 30-minute time frame, and uh, what we see in here is the, um, the 135 level is what I've been kind of uh, calling, you know, the 134 and a half to 135 level, 135 being right here. So 134 and a half to 135 is this prior level uh, or area of resistance. Now, support and resistance aren't always an exact precise number, but more they tend to be an area where we find sellers. So as the market pulls back, hopefully this will hold a support somewhere in this area. It could come down a little bit further, would still be okay as long as we c you know, continue to hold on to this little pattern that's emerging of higher highs and higher lows. So if this market pulls, it is pretty extended here. If it can pull back even to and find support near the rising five-day moving average, which will catch up to this market, maybe near 133.5, 134, that would be an okay scenario as well. If we take a look at the Fibonacci uh, from this move, you know, a 50% retracement would take us down to about 132.5 and a 38.2% uh, would be about 133 or so. If we take a look at the longer time frame, I want to look at this hourly just to show you now. Uh, why don't we take a look at this actually at the daily time frame. If we look at the VWAP, the average price this market has, uh, you know, the S&P 500 has exchanged hands since the January lows, it's right here at about 133.70. The market obviously closed above that level. So we'll look to see for about 133.70, I think, should be an area that is probably going to, uh, you know, have a hard-fought battle that if the buyers can gain control, they'll defend that level. Uh, so I think 133.70 down to uh, this 133.30 level. So 133.30 to 133.70, I think if the market can pull back and consolidate and hold on to gains uh, above a rising five-day moving average in that area, then maybe we can start to see that this market is really building a, a, a more solid level of support in here. Again, though, the declining 50-day moving average says that this rally typically will not hold. So you have to be very careful continue to play strong defense. Overall, we're still in a bear market. It's showing good signs for sure. Um, and again, it's too early to call this a double bottom. So here, so I'm not going to get into another lesson about that. But when we look at the shorter term action, you know, today the market just uh, opened up, uh, you know, gapped higher with, you know, People were excited about the Bear Stearns news. It took out these highs, continued to rally. We did see a little bit of pullback towards the end of the day, and it came down to right to that uh, daily VWAP. So the average participant, uh, you know, the, the, the average shares changed hands right around near that daily VWAP level. And you can see here uh, with that, you know, we, we've had it or just in here a nice pattern of higher highs and higher lows. When that pattern was interrupted in here, um, with the with the first uh, you know lower low and you know first the lower high then the lower low, then we saw that the sellers uh, came in and, and kind of pushed this market a little bit lower. But very impressive job for the market to hold on to these gains. Uh, again, this declining volume is a reason for concern. Um, only price pays if you s sold short. You know, as it was at 134 or 134.50 or whatever, you're still losing money. Remember, again, only price pays, and that's where the the majority of your analysis has to continue to be focused on. So, uh, we're still kind of just uh, searching for this uh, may this you know the potential for a bottom in here. 
and we're seeing a lot more encouraging signs. As I said last week, it was encouraging that the market was able to absorb this bearish news uh, and, uh, you know, Bear Stearns, bearish news, and still, you know, not get hit harder. And, you know, the more people that get caught off guard, like we saw in the financials, from failed moves come these very fast moves. Now, the financials have come up, and they're right around that 50-day moving average, uh, just like the S&P 500. And they were also coming down to this, uh, you know, di or, I'm sorry, came up to this declining trend line. So we found that, you know, we've seen some that th on the daily time frame that this level has been important as support back in January and then resistance over here in February. Now the key levels, I think, are again, are going to be this 2620 level that was important as support uh, back here um, and, you know, before the, uh, the March breakdown. We saw it come up and find resistance in that level. But again, we have a pattern of higher highs and higher lows in here. And this low is going to be important. Uh, you know, as long as this 25 level holds, I think that uh, then we're not going to see new lows for, for a while. We'll see that, uh, you know, we can start to breathe a little bit easier in here. But again, you know, this market is still very badly damaged. If you're buying, you know, today, uh, thinking that, you know, it's for a longer term investment, I think that, you know, you're going to see uh, the prices, you know, pull back down probably towards that 25 level, you know, or, uh, you know, under 26 at least. Um, and, and, you know, a, a healthy bull market sees the 10-day moving average above the 20-day moving average, the 20-day moving average above the 50-day moving average, and all of those have a positive slope to them. We still don't have that yet. As I pointed out in the XHB last week, the Home Builder Index, we're starting to see some more encouraging signs in here. But this market even came to its declining 200-day moving average with a big, big player's uh, key off of. And when that happens, a lot of time you might see a little bit more sideways action, but we need to see all these moving averages get lined back up with the short term above the intermediate term, with the intermediate term above the longer term, and all of them advancing. So this market still has a lot of work left. Don't get too excited about these 1.6% rallies like we saw in the XLF today, which was obviously very encouraging, but it doesn't change the fact that, you know, in the XLF that we're still in a primary downtrend. So um, just continue to exercise to caution. We're seeing you know, a little bit more clarity uh, as far as the, the sellers not just c you know completely owning this market, uh, but the, the, the bullish uh, volume is starting to, uh, you know, the bullish uh, momentum is starting to wane as evidenced by volume. The, uh, you know, the XLF came down a lot harder than the rest of the market in here today. They tried to find some support in it at 27 level, and that was VWAP as well. When it broke that, then a lot of people rushed in and, and took some of these quick profits that they've had in here. For now, in the shorter term, the intermediate term rather time frame, and that's, you know, 30 minute time frames, we're going to look for this 26 level to hopefully hold as support. That would be a very encouraging sign um, and allow us to, to think that, you know, the worst is maybe behind for the, for the, uh, for the XLF. Um, the IWM, let's not take a look at the semiconductors because they're still, you know, they're, they're one of the stronger groups in here, but they're just basically neutral back up towards the top end of the range and found a little bit of selling near that $30 level today. The Russell 2000 was up 3.8%. Uh, it cleared the 69 level, so that's that's very encouraging as well. It cleared the 50-day moving average, but the 50-day moving average is declining, and volume is also declining, so this move is very likely to fail. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm expecting new lows necessarily down towards the 64 level, because I think when we saw all that bad news come out and the market held, that it just put a, a psychological short-term bottom in this market. Now price has to kind of confirm that good feeling and make sure there isn't a, that next shoe to potentially drop that could, you know, get people to change their minds real rapidly like they did after these other, you know, large rallies back in here. People change their minds very quickly when we have a primary downtrend, and you have to be quick to lock in those gains and uh, be, you know, be ready to, 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 to take the other side quickly. Uh, $69 level, though, 68 and a half to 69 has been the area that we've seen resistance for this market, and it made it very decisively above that early morning 
and held on to those gains. This market held on, uh, I think, be, you know, pretty much better than the S&P 500 and certainly better than the uh, financials. And you can see that they finished uh, pretty strong in here today. So what we're going to look for in here is 68 and a half, 69 to be uh, support if it pulls back down towards that level here over the next few days. If it can pull back there and hold on to that as support, well, then we're going to start to see a little bit more encouraging signs in here. We've still got all this trading back in here, though, from... Uh, mid-January to late February, where price has memory. A lot of people purchased in there, and that means that there are a lot of people probably looking to take, you know, at this rally saying, hey, now I can take take some of my money off the table. If we look at the average price since the January lows in here, they're also coincident with that 68.5 to 69 level. This is about 68.80 or so. So I think that that level will also be a very hard-fought level uh, you know, bulls will try and defend it, and bears will try and push the market back below it. I think right now in the intermediate term, though, again, as long as the five-day moving average is rising, we want to give the benefit of the intermediate term to the buyers in here, and we want to look at these pullbacks and, and watch them develop. And if they start to show signs that there are, uh, in, in, you know, finding uh, some support, then we want to look for evidence of that and, and see if it makes sense to purchase. Let's take a look for, uh uh, right now it, it gold because a lot of people have been asking me to take a look at gold because this large hit now gold has been super extended in this uptrend um, you know and they can you know which which is why it's ho so hard to pick tops it looks like it's trying to find support along this trend line however if you look at the daily time frame a lot of people bought on this day thinking well it's close enough to the 50 day moving average 50 day moving average off an axis support this market got crushed on huge volume so it doesn't tell me that it tell you know the biggest volume is traded in quite a while. So I think that there'll likely be a bounce, maybe up towards that 10 and 20 day moving average. But if I was long uh, longer term positions in gold, I think this big big volume is a good reason to be concerned. If we look at a 10 minute time frame, there's no evidence that this selling is done yet. We're starting to see a little bit of accumulation perhaps in here. It looks like this uh, level right here at about 91.50 is you know, 65 actually is going to be important. But you want to wait, if you're looking for new purchases in here, you want to wait for this orange, the five-day moving average, to come down, flatten out, and then see the market get back above it and buy strength. If it can do that, then I think it's okay to go back into gold. If you're in there now, it's no different than buying, uh, you know, Google uh, on its way down from 710 to 7, you know, 680 down to 400. Um, picking tops and bottoms are the hardest jobs there are on Wall Street. Uh, but everyone, try, everyone signs up for the job. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, very impressive action in here as it broke this downtrend line uh, for one. It was up 3.4% here today and held on to the majority of those gains. Uh, unimpressively, we saw real light volume in here. So, the, you know, it was more of an absence of sellers in here. The sellers have been worn out in here. There's just not a lot of supply. I think the market will find, you know, the market's purpose is to facilitate trade and it seeks out supply to offset this demand. So far, it hasn't encountered it yet, it yet, which is why any resistance level we look at is nothing more than a potential resistance level until the market actually shows signs that there's big volume up there and that the sellers are taking it back control. But if you look at this 10-minute time frame, we've got a nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern that would indicate, you know, the height of this 41 to 43 and a half. That's two and a half points. That would give us a target up near 46. I find it uh, improbable that w it would happen, but uh, again, I just want to point it out to you. Impressively, though, the market made it above the 43.50 level. That's the level I said on Friday would be key for this market this week, and now it's pretty far away from it as well. That it's it's it, it increases the chances that any pullback that comes in here uh, will you know maybe get halted near 44, maybe 43.75. Let's see, you know, again, there's no evidence yet that the sellers are coming in and taking control. They have the ability to take control pretty easily, though, because the light volume shows the buyers aren't really rushing into this market. It's more of an absence of supply. Um, the level that really this, this last sell-off uh, materialized from was after repeated a test of that 44.50 level. When 44.50 failed, that's when all hell broke loose. Now the market's holding that level of support. I think, you know, if it holds above 40, you know, today's uh, mid-afternoon low at about 44.30 or so, 4435, uh, if it breaks below that, then we might just start to see a little pattern of lower lows and lower highs develop. But the intermediate term, I, I wouldn't get too aggressive if you're selling short. 
These rallies typically don't last in, with the 50-day moving average declining, but we're starting to see more indecision that it, it just means time to, you know, continue to be uh, trading smaller share size in here.